Hello and welcome back to Matt Hayes Tottenham blog and to the best Tottenham transfer roundup we're going to have this window because we are joined by the man of the hour Fabrizio Romano to discuss the latest Tottenham transfer updates. Fabrizio in a very busy time uh, thank you so much for for giving your time to the channel how are you getting on enjoying the window? Hello Matt hello how are you hope everything is good and always happy to be here answering your questions. Brilliant. I absolutely love it. There's so many people in the live chat excited to, to hear your answers. And well, there's only one place to start, really. Uh, and it is the news yesterday that Tottenham submitted an official bid for Luis Diaz of Porto. Um, are there any updates on that today? Yes, they submitted this proposal. Um, it was a face by face meeting. So Tottenham were really serious on this one. I'm told that at the moment from Porto, still no intention to accept 35, 40 million for Luis Diaz. They want more than this, way more than this. It's around 60, 65, no less than 65 to start a negotiation. So it's still complicated. Um, I'm told that the player is not a big problem for this deal. So the player dreams of Premier League. And so I heard some rappers saying that the player is not keen. It's not a big problem, the player in this story. The real problem is between clubs because Porto won't make big money with, uh, with Luis Diaz. So let's see if Tottenham will decide to try with another bid in the coming hours or if they will move on. But for sure, he's a target. He's a player that Fabio Paratici appreciates and so they're trying for him. And is this a move that could be dependent on other ones? Like, are, there, are we maybe expecting for Ndamele to go that could finance a bit of a deal here? Or is this a, a deal that stands on its own? Or should we expect a kind of domino effect if this is to happen? No, this is important to say that outgoings in general are going to help new signings for Tottenham. So they're waiting for outgoings to sign new players. Then let's see if it will be Luis Diaz or what happens with Adama. Also, from Rabat is the same. It's about the outgoings. Selling players is going to be key. We always say this. And it's still like this in the final days of the window. So absolutely, the answer is yes, not just for Luis Diaz, for all the signings that Tottenham want to do. And just an important one here, uh, Richie's asking in the live chat, is have Porto rejected that first bid or is it just part of the negotiations uh, that nothing no, really no, has the, been defended? This is always part of the negotiation because it's nothing permanent. So if Tottenham will decide to jump in with another bid, it's still an open situation. But at the same point, Porto are not going to deadline day for Luis Diaz. This is what they want. So they want the season within this week. Uh, we are Wednesday. So let's see in the next 24, 48 hours if Tottenham will decide to jump again into it. But at the moment, they are not intentional to accept 35 or 40 million. So this is what they communicated to Tottenham. Let's see if Tottenham will do a new proposal or if they will go for a different targets. Well, look, let's hope we put in another bid there because he's definitely a very special player. And, and just lastly on him, he is uh, on international duty with Colombia at the moment. Could that affect any potential deal or will we be, will we be putting him on a plane with Davinson Sanchez to, to bring him back? Sorry, I, I lost the, fir the first name you told me. Um, with, with Luis Diaz, he's on international duty ah, with yes. Colombia. Could yes, that yes, be yes, a yes, problem? No, no, no. I'm told no. I'm told no that in this case, Tottenham have everything ready, but it's not just for Luis Diaz. It happens when players are with their national teams. So it takes maybe some time, but you have no problem with medical or with this kind of thing. So it's not about the player. I want to say again, it's not the player refusing Tottenham or medical as a problem. It's about the clubs in this case. Perfect. Well, let's hope Tottenham can uh, can get a deal done there. Um, one that we are uh, expecting to be a little bit closer to completion, as you mentioned there, is Sofian Amrabat. Uh, you said yesterday that Amrabat is ready to accept the proposal from Tottenham and it's, it's simply down to Spurs to decide if you want to move for that player. Is, is that one you think Spurs will go for? Yes, the feeling I have is that Tottenham are getting closer to sign Sofian Amrabat. Uh, let's see in the coming hours what happens, but um, I can say that Tottenham, as we said on Sunday, they open negotiation, they open talks with people close to Amrabat and with Fiorentina. They have a good relationship with Fiorentina, Paratici and Fiorentina board since a since long time. So this is why they are prepared to do this um, proposal for Sofian Amrabat once they will complete some outgoing. So let's see what happens with Lombardy in the coming hours. But this is the plan. Once they complete something on, on outgoings, uh, they're ready to, to go for Amrabat as midfielder. He's, in this moment, the main option because Antonio Conte is convinced that this is an important player and perfect for his ideas and perfect for Premier League. Same for Fabio Pratici. We are talking about a player that maybe if you go on transfer market, you can see that he's not a starter for Fiorentina. Mm -hmm. But this player with Verona was one of the best players, one of the best midfielders we had in Serie A uh, two years ago. Uh, with Fiorentina, they changed the manager. Uh, and this is why the situation changed, but because the manager is playing completely different football. But Amrabat is kind of perfect player for Conte ideas, and this is why they want to go for him. It's a loan with buy option. Perfect. Well, I think the Spurs fans are a bit sceptical about this one because we haven't really heard of Amrabat and he's not starting, but he's the player that Conte wants and that for me is the is, is the key thing that we should look for here. Um, now, another player, one that's been rumbling on for, for the entire window is Adama Traore. Um, now, Simon Stone of the BBC said in the last half an hour that there's been no progress on this one. Um, other reports suggesting a, a little bit differently. Can you give us an update on Adama? 
Yes, the situation with Adama is particular, I would say, because they're working on Adama since long, long time. He's the main target, and um, during the weekend, Friday, Saturday, they were feeling confident to complete this deal from Tottenham. Then now the situation is a bit quiet. Uh, maybe it could be part of a strategy. We know how Paratici works. Uh, it's a different way from English directors, so many times he's going on different targets at the same moment. But Adama is a player they have in the list. He's a player that Paratici and Conte both appreciate, so I'm sure that he's still in Tottenham ideas, in Tottenham list. The problem is they don't want to pay 25 million euros or 27 million euros for a player who is out of contract in 2023 and doesn't want to to extend this contract with Wolves at the moment. So this is why uh, on Tottenham side they want to pay the right money, it's around 17, 18 million euros. Uh, let's see because the negotiation will continue. They are feeling co- they were feeling confident during the weekend, but he's still a player that I'm sure you know, they're working on it. And let's see if they will be able to find agreement. But it's a player they have in their list since long, long time. Perfect. Am I correct in saying the personal terms of the Dama have, have already been agreed on that one? It's not a problem. Uh, this is the answer I have. It's not that it's fully agreed, but it's not the player. Also, in this case, it's not a problem. Adama would be happy to join uh, Wolves. He knows about Antonio Conte. This is an important point. He's always been tempted by this chance of working with Antonio Conte because we know that with wingers, Antonio is, is amazing. Uh, Akimi, he made Akimi the best right back in the world or one of the best in the world last season. So I'm sure that on player side, there is no problem. Perfect. Um, look, let's talk about a few outgoings, and the main one, as we've already alluded to, is Tongi Undombele. Um, can you tell us the latest with him and a potential loan deal for Paris Saint-Germain? Yes, talking about um, Dombele's situation with Paris Saint-Germain, they're negotiating since days, and uh, we know the situation uh, is clear. Tottenham want the whole salary paid, and uh, Paris Saint-Germain want the buy option included. So they're negotiating on the value of the buy option. And from what I understand, Paris Saint-Germain would be prepared to pay his world salary till the end of the season. So it's about the buy option now. Also Valencia, according to last rappers in France, have interest in, in Dombele. They are looking for a midfielder. They were thinking of Don Ivan de Beck. But now Crystal Paras are, are pushing on this one. And so this is why are going for, they are going for, for Dombele. But at the same point, it's up to the player. For Tottenham, it's exactly the same uh, if he joins Paris Saint-Germain or Valencia because they want the world salary paid in both cases. And let's say for the value of the buy option for Paris Saint-Germain, it's up to the player. His agents are talking with both clubs, Valencia and Paris Saint-Germain, but Paris Saint-Germain are still leading the race because they need French players for their list in Ligue 1, and this is why Ndombele uh, is an option that they are seriously considering. But maybe they will need some outgoing to sign Ndombele, and this is why it's going this low. So it's a domino in the market in this moment, but Paris Saint-Germain have a strong interest in, in terms of Ndombele. And in terms of those outgoings for PSG, is there any possibility uh, for Gini Wijnaldum and Julian Draxler, players that we mentioned quite a bit in the press, as potential going to Spurs as part of this deal? Is there anything, any truth to that? No, this is something that has been discussed because between clubs, uh, they have great relationship, Leonardo and Paratici, and so they were discussing about the possibility of doing a swap deal. But from what I understand at the moment, there is no talk for, uh, for Wijnaldum in particular. The player at the moment is not involved in the negotiation between uh, between Tottenham and, uh, and Paris Saint-Germain. Let's see what happens with Draxler, but at the moment it's not a swap deal, as of now. But then <laughs> Fabio Paratici is a big fan of swap deals, so everything can change in five minutes on this point. I think that's that's kind of what's, what's keeping us going, the fact that at any moment Paratici could come out with like a Brian Gill type signing or like Weston McKennie like he did at Juventus. Exactly. Um, another player that could be on his way out is Deli Alli, and we're hearing there's interest from Newcastle, Everton and Southampton on a potential loan deal. Have you any, any update on Alli's future? Yes, all these clubs are interested. Uh, let's see now with Lingard deal complicated for Newcastle if they will decide to jump uh, on Dele Alli opportunity because for sure they have interest in Dele. There are also other clubs, as you mentioned, interested. So let's see Southampton, Everton, what's next also on player side and what he wants to do. For sure, also in, the ca- in this case, Tottenham won the wall salary paid. They were exploring the possibility of doing a swap deal uh, in the first week of January to look for some opportunity, but it's not easy to find a club uh, and the player that could be part of a swap deal for Dele. So I will keep an eye on these opportunities. The clubs you mentioned uh, are absolutely correct. Uh, Newcastle could be a possibility if this Lingard deal will definitely collapse. Let's see what happens with Bruno Guimaraes because they're working on many players at the same point too. But for sure, the reality, I expect him to leave. Uh, I expect him to leave Tottenham in the coming days. Perfect. I think that, uh, in terms of outgoings, could be another important one to, to allow us to bring players in. Um, before we do wrap up, can you tell us, are there any, any moves that we've missed? Or is there anything maybe going on behind the scenes? Perhaps you work on his magic? Or is everything out there already? 
No, um, I, I, I think that uh, outgoings would be really important. So let's see Ndombele, Dele Alli, maybe also another player who leave the club uh, before the end of the season. For Tanganga and Asi Milan, now uh, the deal is not going through. They're going for a different kind of player because Tottenham were not accepting the stride loan till the end of the season. So let's see, but I'm sure that the outgoings will be key to understand who's going to join the club in the coming days. But I expect Tottenham to do one or two signings for sure. I expect two or three signings, let's say like this. Perfect. I love that. I love that confidence. Just quickly, um, one more. A uh, few, few people asking in the chat about Giovanni Lo Celso and Sevilla. Could we see a move there? At the moment, it's still quiet. Also because Sevilla spent money on Martial. Uh, they are saving money keeping Diego Carlos. So at the moment, it's still quiet. But Lo Celso could be one of the players uh, to keep an eye on in the coming days if Tottenham will decide to let him go or Brian Hill too because he has proposals from Valencia and uh, Nice and Real Sociedad, all clubs interested in signing him on loan. So let's see. But they have some possibilities. Perfect. Well, Fabrizio, as Rob says here, uh, thank you so much for your time. Um, Rob's a big fan of you on my channel. Thank you, Rob, for the support thank and you. for the super chat. And Fabrizio, for your time today in such a busy, busy part of the window. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Super pleasure and all the best to Tottenham fans. Thank you. Ciao. Thank you. We'll talk to you soon. Um, well, look, uh, always uh, an incredible experience having Fabrizio Romano on the channel. And today we're going to dive through the bits of everything that he said there with the two absolute legends. Uh, we've got Jack and Nicky and Dave at the Irish, Irish Hotspur to, um, to talk us through this one. First of all, gents, how are you getting on today? Jack, we'll start with you. Thanks for having me on, Maddie. It's a pleasure. Uh, doing okay. You know, it seems like, you know, we wake up with new rumors every day. It seems like it's starting to get a bit solidified as, as to who we're actually going after, who we actually might get through the door. Um, mm -hmm. Pretty excited about maybe the, the chaotic sort of ending to this transfer window. Wouldn't be Tot Tottenham Hotspur if it wasn't chaos. Uh, David, I'm sure you, uh, you're probably on the complete opposite end of that, uh, that spectrum there. Are you enjoying the chaos or do you just want it all over? Do you know what? To be honest with you, let's be honest. Up until now, it was only a Dama Traore and it was pretty boring. You know, we had we only had that to talk about. Right now, these last few days, it's very exciting. But let's back that up by getting some of the deals over the line. I do feel like Tottenham have been here a couple of times before with five, ten million off and not willing to bridge that gap. But look, I mean, it's the transfer window. It's uh, I, I, I love the rumours. I love sifting through them to see what should, what, what you should be um, looking into, what you shouldn't. But uh, look, thanks for having me. Absolutely brilliant um, having Fabrizio Romano on again. Matt, fair play to you. And, um, you know, I really liked what you had to say. Yeah, absolutely. And look, thanks for the two of you coming on. And unsurprisingly, as Romano left, so have a lot of the viewers. But with 700 still left here, before you do leave, make sure to smash that subscribe button on your way out and hit the like button as well if you have enjoyed this stream. Um, but we're not done yet. Uh, we do have quite a bit to sift through. And uh, I think where we're going to start is what with what Fabrizio had to say about Luis Diaz. And Jack, we'll come to you on this one. Um, Fabrizio told me that Porto have no intention to accept Tottenham's first offer of 35 slash 40 million pounds for Luis Diaz. It's still very complicated. The club are trying for him. But again, he reiterated that the player would not be a problem within this deal. Uh, I'm sure you know a lot about Luis Diaz. I'm sure you want this deal to happen. Uh, tell me your thoughts on that. Uh, I, I really do want this deal to happen just quickly, Maddie, just because what I kind of have debated with David before is, you know, sometimes we've been kind of saying, do we sign a true number nine, you know, to kind of partner Harry Kane, someone that can only play that sort of position, or do we sign somebody that's world class that can play kind of like Sonny, where he can play as a left wing, he can play as a striker, he can play across the forward line. And that's what I kind of like about Luis Diaz. Personally, I think that's the type of player we should be going after to be that sort of quote unquote, you know, backup striker to Harry Kane, uh, someone that can actually challenge Lucas or Bergvine for that third kind of position in the front three, someone that can fill in for Sonny if Sonny's not available, someone that can fill in for Harry Kane if Harry Kane isn't available. I feel like that would be Luis Diaz. I kind of, I will say, Matty, I've watched him solely in the Champions League. I'm kind of not the biggest expert on kind of Liga Nash or Primera Liga, uh, but I will say in the Champions League, the guy has looked ridiculous. He's looked unbelievable. He's lightning quick. And I do mean rapid, absolutely rapid on the ball. He really knows how to be able to cut inside. He knows how to kind of take a shot for himself. I would say his kind of conversion rate, which you kind of broke down yesterday, I think, Matty, when it comes to how many shots he does per 90 and actually how many he actually puts away is quite impressive. You know, when he doesn't really shoot as much as you would like, but yet he kind of constantly does finish them. I think that's a very good sign of the type of player we're looking at. He skins past players for fun. You can even see that in some of his stats. I'm really excited about this sort of deal, Maddie. In terms of the fee, I feel like we're going to need to get a lot close, closer to that 60 million kind of pound mark in order for the guy to leave. I don't think we need to go the full 80 million pounds, uh, but I feel like we're going to need to get a whole lot closer to 60 uh, in order for them to maybe start, you know, thinking about letting the guy go. 
Yeah, no, it's it, it's a huge fee. It's an absolutely huge fee to be paid. But I think um, I can't remember who I was watching or who I was listening to, but but someone made the point that if Tottenham leave this till the summer, you run the risk of a lot more teams being interested Correct. and a lot of teams having you know more time to to get a deal done and perhaps more finances as well to pursue a deal like this. So for Tottenham, as uh, as upsetting as it is to say for an underdog to bring in a player like Luis Diaz, I think January is the best time to get that done. You mentioned there are potentially 60 million euro. Some reports suggesting that uh, Porto could hold out for the 80 million euro release clause that is in Yikes. the 25-year-old's contract. But David, Jack alluded to it there, the, um, the conversion rate of Luis Diaz and he, he averages a goal uh, every 0.17 shots, which is the 83rd percentile in uh in the top five leagues and european competition uh in europe that is uh, he averages a goal every 0.5 shots on target uh, which is the 92nd percentile and with a player like him with a player like julian alvarez as well from the argentinian uh premier league you can look at their goals and say straight up well it's brilliant he scores a lot of goals but when his conversion rate is better like that do you feel it's it's easier to adapt to the premier league and simply knowing how to put the ball in the back of the net is, is a very transferable skill Oh, one hundred percent. I mean, you know, the the goal never the goal never moves, um, uh, Matty. It's always in the same place, you know. And once a once a guy knows how to find the net, he's going to keep finding the net. It's that simple. I mean, we have to remember this is a guy that only moved to Porto in twenty nineteen. You know, it's not like Carlos Finishers we brought in, who's been a journeyman, been at all these other clubs, um, been out unknown all his career. This guy moved from from. Uh, um, Colombia to, to Porto in 2019, and look at the rapid rise he's had. And now we like, you know, there could be excuses made for him, pandemic, whatever else. But there's no excuses. He's still got out there and performed, and that's what we need to bring to Tottenham Hotspur. Players that would that that have a point to prove. Players that want to be in the Premier League, want to be at Tottenham Hotspur, and have hunger and desire to improve themselves. And that's what we need at Tottenham. And this guy will bring it. He's already proven that he can move from a country to Porto and adapt very, very, very quickly. And look, again, just to reiterate, this is a deal that, like Matty was saying, if you're underdogs going into this deal, you have to just dump up the money straight away. That's how you get these mm -hmm. players to your club because Liverpool have really been monitoring this guy since the summer. They were rumoured to make a bid this January. I don't know whether that'll, whether that'll happen or come to fruition or not. But my point is, is why why sit there knowing you're so far apart? Get closer to where they are, get the deal done, and get them in and shock some of the some of the people out there, some of the other clubs out there. That's how you get these deals done. But we're constantly, constantly messing about. You know, we, we constantly come in, we lowball them. Eventually we get to 50 million, they want 60 million, and then the waters, then the then the, the, the deal's dead in the water because we don't want to pay that extra few million. You want this guy, you get him in, in over the line. Plus He's technically good, uh, Matty. You know, I didn't know too much about Niesa, but I've got a much um, stuff on him. This guy is technically good. He can play in tight spaces. He can do the basics of football, control and pass the ball. And that's why the guy has 16, 16 goals and 16 assists uh, this season. And for me, you need someone like that in at Tottenham. Against Chelsea, you look at it. People are saying, oh, well, we, we, you know, we were poor. We sat back. We couldn't get over our own half. Wrong. Second half, we tried to get over our half so many times. We're in the final third. It's just our passing was absolutely shocking. So we need mm -hmm. players coming in that can do the basics and technically gifted and play in tight areas. And this is one. Get it over the line. Get them in. No time waste on this one. And look, there's nothing I'd love more than to sit here and talk about the, the mouth-watering prospect of Harry Kane, Hoingman Son and Luis Diaz. We'd love to have a Luis Diaz love-in. But Jack, unfortunately, we do have to talk about how realistic this deal going through actually is. And people are comparing it to, to Milan Skriniar, to Bruno Fernandes, to Paolo mm -hmm. Dybala, to, to mm -hmm. all these big players. And I, I saw a tweet yesterday that made a very good point. Um, everyone is using these examples uh, as reasons why Luis Diaz won't come in. But the last time we were in a position like this was last summer with Christian Romero. And we all know what happened there. That deal came over the line. So if we're looking at these high-profile deals, ones that, again, Tottenham are probably the underdog for not having European football, uh, not being comfortably in that top four this season, the only time we've really been there with this current management that we have, we've been successful and we've made that deal happen. Does that give you confidence that we can get this one over the line? Or is it potentially a PR stunt from Tottenham to to ease the the anger after the Sofer and Amberbat news? What a question, Matty. What a question, I'll be honest. Um, <laughs> it's... It, you can easily make a case for both reasons. I would maybe quickly kind of preface and say, Luis Diaz, although the fee is huge, you might say in terms of like actual household names, high profile sort of names, not exactly on the level really of the Dabalas or the Latara Martinez's mm -hmm. of the world. I would say he's completely justified in the fee that he is valued at, Luis Diaz. I think that's 
completely justified. But you might say that because he doesn't have exactly the same sort of like name recognition as maybe a Dybala or Latara Martinez or other such players that we've gone after before, maybe that kind of gives you more reason why potentially we are really going after this one because it's not just as much smoke and mirrors as maybe other th those other transfers in the past have been. Of course, the Christian Romero one, we all kind of thought wasn't going to happen because it just seems like too big of a fee. It took forever in order to get it through. We were kind of thinking of all the moving parts that had to do with it, you know, Atalanta giving him back to Juventus, Juventus then mm -hmm. selling him back to us and things like that. We all kind of thought that seemed kind of a bit hectic. It actually ended up working out. And, and so maybe this could be a similar sort of situation where like Christian Romero and Luis Diaz, two players that are extremely highly rated and, and we're having spectacular seasons, but maybe not as much household names as the likes of Dybala and mm -hmm. other players like that. So maybe that kind of gives you the inclination that they are kind of players at our level, players that maybe we can't go after. Uh, but of course, you know, it seems like the whole situation, Maddie, with uh, 5 million is kind of the difference between us and getting Adama. It seems like 10 million is going to be the difference potentially between us and like signing kind of Luis Diaz. It all seems all vaguely too familiar uh, to mm -hmm. the to the Levy that we know very well, which is someone that does like to haggle over just the finest and finest of margins of getting somebody out, uh, through the door. I'd like to think that this one isn't as much smoke and mirrors as maybe the Lotaro one and things like that, where I kind of don't think it is. I think we are genuinely trying whether we'll actually do it is, I don't know, it's so remain to be seen. I'm going to be optimistic and I'll kind of put some egg on my face, Maddie. I do think we are going to at least improve the bid. If we don't get it through, mm. then I'm looking forward to a beautiful PR stunt from Tottenham Hotspur. <laughs> look, uh, again, it wouldn't really surprise any of us. And look, likening it to that Dybala deal and the whole uh, problem with the image rights there, Adrian here making the point that Porto actually only own 80% of Luis Diaz, which is which is truly bizarre. I've only ever really heard of that uh, back when Carlos Tevez and Javier Mascherano joined <laughs> West Ham. I mean, aside from that, I, I, I don't really know what that means. I don't know what, how that would affect the deal. Um, but Aaron Fernandez here makes a good point as well he says that he will be statement signing and david when fabrizio Romano tweeted yesterday and as he said earlier today uh, on the stream that there it was a face-to-face -face, it was a direct meeting between Tottenham representatives and porto in portugal and and surely that means there's a commitment to this deal because as i mentioned on my stream last night you're looking at trying to get uh, a damage over the line you're looking at finalizing <clears throat> excuse me finalizing that amrabat deal you want to get a da or tongue in dambele and deli ali out of the club so to send a delegation to portugal to get that done surely there is a strong commitment to that deal right no, hundred percent. Um, yeah, it has to be. I mean, look, we did send Steve Hitchin out to out to Milan for, for trying to get a screen hour one done. But look, we all know what Steve Hitchin done with, with, with the funds that he was allocated. So, look, that has you have to put that under under the bridge sometime. You have to sweep that away. Look, like you said, we've got the Romero deal done. But the key part to this, Matty, is that this guy wants to come. We wouldn't be out there if this guy didn't want to come here. The fact that we're out there trying to get a deal done. Shows me that we're serious. But, I mean, you have to remember, a lot of the fan base are very unhappy with what's going on right now. There's a lot of pressure on them. Sky Sports were going through recruitment and everything else the other day, which they don't usually do when it comes to Tottenham. They just sit there like like battering us. So, to be fair, there's a lot of pressure coming on from, uh, from all aspects. You look at Antonio Conte from the start of December... Or from the end of the from the end of December to now, he's getting more and more impatient. He looks more and more unhappy. So there's probably pressure from him as well. He keeps saying, "I've told the board what we need. I've told them what I want," you know. But but nothing's been acted on. So there's pressures from all quarters, and that's what makes me think that they will get this deal done. They know there's protests coming deadline day. They know there's protests already lined up. They've seen Brian Daigle already. Don't worry. Yeah, know. exactly. <laughs> so they're gonna want to get this deal done they're going to want to try uh, and quell all of that because we know that they don't like the bad publicity but we, we, the biggest part the biggest factor in this for me is yeah we can sit here and say Conte won't walk now which he probably won't he probably will walk or it probably will be the summer if he goes anywhere but I'm not even going to say he's going to walk this summer if we don't get a deal like this and one or two others over the line this January come this summer when United are looking for a manager and there's going to be other big big teams around Europe looking for managers that have the money They'll just come to Antonio and say, look, come to us. We'll give you $150 million to go out and spend straight away. Buy what you want. We'll do it your way. He's out of here because we haven't shown any ambition previously in the January transfer window. Mm -hmm. um, and just on that third party ownership, now that I know that, <laughs> that will be a bit of a stumbling block. It's like the Diabala situation. So with them, Matty, right, 
some of the youngsters in Argentina, in our, in, not, in, not in Argentina, sorry, in South America, they sign up to like these agencies. So <clears throat> these agencies promise to get them over to Europe, promise to get them to the big clubs. Uh, and what, what basically what it is, is they'll take a percentage of the image rights. They'll take a percentage of the transfer fee. They'll take a percentage as well of, of um, some of the players' wages as well. So technically, they own this guy. But what they're essentially doing is capitalising on these sort of people because, you know, basically they own their career. They own they own them until these guys pay pay them off or, or buy out of it. So they're capitalising on talent and using it to, for their own game, which is a bit wrong. But that's the situation with, with that with, with that sort of ownership uh, and that twenty percent mm -hmm. that a third party owes, and that's where it could become complicated. Yeah, and it's uh, like Jack said, it, it is all too familiar. Um, I, I personally don't hold the same confidence that we'll get this deal done. Um, it's it's encouraging to see until it doesn't happen, if that makes sense. Like we can we can argue all you want about yes. it being a PR stunt, but when when it falls through, I think, or when and if it falls through, I think we'll all we'll all see it for what it really was. Um, yeah. But just to reiterate that 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 news today, the Porto have no intention of accepting Totten's bid of 35 about 37.6 million pounds for Luis Diaz and they want to earn 60 to 65 um, million euro that is um, so let's see if Tottenham go back in with a new bid as you mentioned uh, the bid made in direct meetings in Portugal but one player that seems set to join Tottenham um, all Tottenham have to do is flick a switch and he will sign that contract is Sofian Amrabat mm -hmm. uh, Romano earlier on this stream said Amrabat is the main option for Tottenham Conte is convinced he's an important player and perfect for his ideas and the Premier League, the same as Fabio Paratici. He also said, the feeling I have is Tottenham are getting closer to signing Sofian Amrabat. Jack, do you do you know much about this player? And I ask that, uh, having watched your incredible uh, video yesterday. <laughs> so them, us, uh, I, I kind of, you know, embarrassingly didn't really know much about this guy, apart from the fact that he was Norden, I believe, Amrabat's, you know, kind of younger brother. I was kind of like, oh, you know, it's nice to see, you know, kind of another kind of brother, you know, uh, out there playing, especially at a different position than his older brother did. But I didn't really know anything about him until I did my research uh, the day before as well as yesterday uh, on the guy. And to be fair, honestly, Maddie, I'll preface this and just say it's not a signing that I'm excited about. It's certainly not a player that I feel like everybody is really excited about. But I will kind of say, get that out of the way and just say, I'm not excited about the sign and get that out of the way. But I would offer a bit of positivity in the fact that he will actually bring something that a lot of players in our team don't really bring. And that is actually ball progression. And that is actually someone who can carry the ball actually quite confidently and quite well. He's not really good in the creative department. He's not even the best tackler in the world but he is actually really good at carrying the ball. I've seen that from just his stats alone, and I've also just seen that from highlights of his as well, as well as also catching up on a few kind of actual just full Fiorentina games when I did see him play. Uh, he did seem like somebody that can actually carry the ball well. We don't exactly have a lot of defensive midfielders or kind of like box-to-box -box midfielders that can really carry the ball, and so he can bring that to the team, which I think is needed. The other thing I would say, Matty, is what I'm excited about this is we have three creative midfielders. We've been talking about signing a creative midfielder, but we have three creative midfielders that we don't actually use or don't really see any use in. And that's Deli Ali, Tongi, and then Gio Lacelso. Those are three bodies that we're just not using. Those are three bodies that Antonio Conte doesn't feel comfortable using or getting the most out of. So might as well bring in someone like an Amrava. I'm not you know, confident in like what he can actually do for Conte, but at least if Conte sees some sort of use in him, if Conte finds utility in the guy and finds a way to actually experiment a bit more, maybe actually get more out of the tactics that he wants to employ, I think that's perfectly fine and that's perfectly justifiable because at least we know with Norden Amrabat, the guy will actually do things that maybe Antonio, Antonio Conte was trying to make Gio do, was trying to make Tongi do, was trying to make Delhi do, and they simply couldn't do it. And maybe Norden Amrabat could be that guy to do those things that they just simply couldn't. So that's kind of the positivity I could offer about this is it's not the best player in the world. He did have a spectacular season at, at Hellas Verona, though, in 2019, yeah. where I compared his stats to Hoybjerg's. And when I compared his stats to Hoybjerg, I would say in a lot of departments, he actually looked uh, pretty decent, especially playing, I think, like 400, 500 minutes less than Hoybjerg, played, you know, pretty decent. Um, but I would say offers ball progression and maybe can also just offer something that a lot of midfielders uh, Antonio Conte hasn't seen uh, mm -hmm. be able to offer. So he could actually be more used to Antonio Conte than other midfielders. I love that positivity. I love trying to, to pick those uh, <laughs> those good things out of the... Huge preface in what? the beginning, but then, you know, <laughs> yeah. to the positivity. Yeah, and just to say as well, in that really good season with Hellas Verona, he was voted third in the Serie A Player of the Year um, 
uh, award. So obviously had a brilliant year then. Yeah, I've seen um, just before we go to, come to David on this one, um, as Lil Balls there says, Jack Clark has joined Sunderland on loan until the end of the season. Um, we all know how I feel about that. I'm gutted. But um, look, I was, I was talking to David about it yesterday and, and David was saying it's a good move. Like he's going to have to get game time. The only concern I have is that his previous loan moves have been to the championship with QPR, yes. Stoke and Leeds where he's done relatively well. He's gone down a division now to Sunderland. But look, game time is game time. Uh, let's hope it works out well for him. Um, David, on Sofiane Amrabat, there was a comment on one of my streams yesterday from Benji, and he said, um, <laughs> it seems that none of you have gotten it, which is starting off a bit aggressively. But then he makes a very good point that uh, Conte doesn't play with a pure number 10. He expects all midfielders to work two ways. Um, I think maybe to some extent the uh, the exception to that rule could have been Christian Eriksen at Inter Milan last season who kind of played in that number 10 role in a 3-4-1-2 quite often. But looking at other players that Antonio Conte's had, um, I think Adamley probably fits the, the style of player, but of course lacking elsewhere. But Marcelo Brozovic, Stefano Sensi, uh, Nicolo Barella at Inter Milan, you'd, you could put Cesc Fabregas and Emmanuel Matic into that um, that list. Pogba actually. in there, Pogba did it at one stage for him. Marquisio yeah. did it for him at one stage. Vidal did it for him at one stage. Exactly. But, yeah, even even Pirlo as well at Juventus. There are quite a few players that do that. Um, so is it, the question for you really, David, is it more important to sign... Uh, or for us to want us to sign this player that none of us really know about, that doesn't really seem that good, but Conte wants, rather than aiming for or playmaker or, or number 10. Is, is the manager's wishes what just needs to be sorted out here? Oh, 100%. I mean, us Spurs fans, we want trophies. We want good football. Who's who, who's the, who's, the, who's the proven winner at this club? Antonio Conte. So you do exactly what he wants. This guy has won leagues. He's won domestic cups. He's even managed Italy. You know what I mean? One of the toughest jobs to get. You know, in in international football, so it it kind of stands out to to what this guy is about. But mate, I thought that's why we got him here, to get this guy in, to be able to rotate the squad, bring what he wants in. You know, go on, go on with two or three years with this guy. Hopefully, win a trophy. But then once he's gone, he's left the foundations in place for another manager to come in and take it over and kind of kick on. You know, so we should be getting players that this guy wants. But just on this guy. I think he's coming in as a as straight away. You'll see Harry Winks drop out, in my opinion. This guy come in. What this guy does offer is a bit like a deep lying playmaker, which I've been talking about for ages at this club. Someone that can get on the ball, pass it, keep control of the ball, like Jack is saying, progressing up the field. Someone that the midfielders have or the defenders have confidence to give to the ball because that confidence has gone with Harry Winks. You look at one stage there against the Chelsea game. He ran in after the ball being battled for. It broke. He ran in and blew it straight back to Chelsea. And it's like when when the guy that you're supposed to be looking to, to get on the ball, to be able to keep it, pass it, and control the game for us in possession, is panicking and ballooning the ball away to Chelsea. What chance have you got at that? You've no chance of even of trying to play good football. But what this guy will come in and he, he will offer this. He offers a bit of a different, a bit of a, a, a different mentality than Harry Winks. I think this would be a very... I, do you know what? I, I do hear a lot of Spurs fans maybe not happy with this one. Don't get me wrong. It's a pure Daniel Levy deal. The guy hasn't been playing. It's 15 million, um, you know, if we want to take him on. It's an absolute Daniel Levy opportunity, uh, opportunist. But it's if he can come in and do better than what Harry Winks is doing when he's panicking and blooming away the ball, it helps out the likes of Harry Kane, our forward players, that they know that this guy, if they drop deep or if they make runs in behind, this guy can find him. He has, I think, the most megs, um, I, I think, um, as well. You know what I mean? And that just shows that if players do come and pressure him, rather than Harry Winks ballooning the ball, you have this guy who's confident, put it through the legs, buy himself more time and play forward. But this is a deal that will happen. I'm telling you now, I'm no Fabrizio Romano. Don't get me wrong. But this guy is represented by the same agency as Garrett Bell, Ben Davies and Joe Roden, which is ICM Stellar Sports. Now, Tottenham have worked with these before, with the three players I've mentioned. Um, so I reckon this will be a, a done deal. It's no problem. I, I genuinely believe that as soon as Endembele is signed off, this guy will be signed in. Well, I, I love it. I uh, love that that research as well. I, I didn't know about the the, the agency there, um, but it, it does feel as though that's a deal that will get over the line, whether it's a, a loan with an option to buy or an obligation to buy or a straight uh, purchase, whatever it is. Um, I think Amrabat will be a Tottenham player probably in the next couple of days. He's, of course, on international duty at uh, at the African Cup of Nations right now. Morocco, I believe, won yesterday against Malawi. I think they beat them 2-1. Um, so they're through to the next round. So he, he's not back yet. 
But um, just to quickly mention, because uh, we know there's a number of players on the list, uh, the list that Tottenham have to replace Tongi and Dumbele, who we'll talk about uh, in depth in a second. One of those players is Bruno Gimwaresh. Um, a lot of reports today that Newcastle have agreed a deal to sign him. Um, Leon has have actually put out a statement in the last uh, five or ten minutes saying uh, Olympic Lyonnais categorically denies the false information disseminated by many media reporting an, ag- an agreement between Newcastle and Leon for the transfer of Brazilian international midfielder Bruno Gimwaresh. So that seemed to be a player that was that was out of the market that was that was about to be picked up. That may not be the case just yet. So I, I don't think it's going to happen. But it's it's relevant as far as as our interest in that player continues. Um, and look, let, let's talk about Tongi and Dombele because we had updates just before we went live at half one with um, Fabrizio Romano uh, from Julian Maynard and these reports were confirmed by Romano that Valencia are now in the market for Ndombele and Julian Maynard suggesting that Valencia have actually agreed a deal to sign Ndombele on a six-month loan deal but then Lark Tanzi saying that Ndombele will wait to see what happens with PSG before giving his answer to mm. Valencia and Jack I think the, the biggest news that we got from Romano which I, I feel many people have glossed over is that uh, we've been told the wages would be the biggest problem for Ndombele but PSG have now yeah. decided to pay all the wages and that's one step closer to this deal being done. Yeah, I think it is one step closer to this deal being done. That's probably the main reason why it's been such a difficult deal to kind of negotiate in the first place is because getting basically 100% of those wages off of our books actually probably dramatically helps us when you think about, let's say, getting Amrabat in, who probably is maybe on a quarter of the wages that maybe Tongi is on. You bring him in and then that, you know, completely justifies, you know, being able to do a loan move and maybe justifies bringing in other players. You do have to think about how much that actually helps getting him off the books. And I would say PSG is weirdly the best destination for Tongi and Dombele uh, from one kind of one toxic player moving into a toxic dressing room. I think he'll <laughs> absolutely probably love it, you know, over there, to be fair to him. Uh, he has, I believe, a friend in Kylian Mbappe, a lot of big egos there. Tongi has a huge ego. I think he'll actually probably enjoy, you know, all the people in that sort of dressing room. It seems to kind of suit him actually to a degree. Um, but as well, you know, it seems like the only club that would probably actually buy him on loan, you know, uh, or buy him after the loan option, you know, Maddie. it seems like the only club that would probably pay whatever fee we kind of put up there uh, to leave after the loan uh, sort of deal. So if he impresses at PSG, he's going to get Champions League football there, which is very interesting. Maybe he'll actually show up for something like that. I'm not sure if the Conference League makes you cup tied. I'm not sure. Uh, but um, oh, if he... <laughs> I hope <it's> not. <laughs> um, but... Maybe he'll like that sort of atmosphere. And let's say he actually all of a sudden starts playing well, like we know he technically can, uh, then maybe that would be actually a good deal for uh, for Tongi and Dumbele. And that would be a good deal for us because then PSG might actually pay whatever fee we come up with for him to actually leave permanently. PSG, I think, is the best club for him. Valencia, I see as a club that will only take him on a loan and then send him right back towards us. Uh, so I'm definitely banking on him going to PSG. Valencia wouldn't be a bad club for him, but I feel like he that's a club, though, that sometimes plays very defensive football. So I would like to see how uh, he would be able to handle that over there and see how he can kind of adjust to that. Whereas PSG kind of free flowing, attacking football with uh, Pochettino uh, back with a bunch of friends of his, as well as a toxic dressing room. Seems like a beautiful atmosphere for Tongi and Dombele. It is. I love you. I think you put that comment in my stream the other night as well. He's a toxic player, toxic player for a toxic dressing room. It just fits. It fits so perfectly. <laughs> um, we have William Kelly here with the, the two dollar super chat. Says I love Levy. I'm not sure you get many people agreeing with you, especially on this panel, panel William. Uh, but look, if he gets these deals over the line, maybe a lot of that will change. Uh, thank you very much for the super chat. Um, teaser and podcast here. Given the criticism of Harry Winks, I think this is caller. Um, and he said Adamble was a pot signing. It's no surprise he wanted him, and it, it absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, it makes sense. Um, he was one of the few signings he made there, and uh, be, I'd be happy to see them link up uh, at PSG because it means it's two hundred grand off our wage uh, our wage book every single week. Um, David, what are your thoughts on this one? And dominate to PSG. Good riddance. I mean, look, the guy came to Tottenham. He, no, honestly, this is a guy record signing, two hundred grand a week. He didn't even come to Tottenham fit. You know, Jose Mourinho had to run embarrassing photos of Jose Mourinho out training with him around an apartment block. That's embarrassing. You shouldn't have to do that with a record signing, a guy you're paying 200, 200K a week to. Um, look, he just doesn't care for the game here. I mean, when Serge Aurier and Sissoko left in the summer, he wanted to go because they were his mates. I mean, boo-hoo, what is it, school? Ridiculous. You know, um, under Nuno, he put him out there, couldn't get a tune out of him. This guy has had multiple chances under multiple managers. His attitude is piss poor. That's why Conte has put him training, training on his own right now. 
his time at Tottenham is done. It's come to an end. Once a manager isolates a player like that, it's done. It's over. We now have to get him off the wage bill. You're talking about a guy. We're one nil down to a struggling league one side, Morco. He's getting substituted off in a game that he should be dominating without even putting in any effort if he's that good. If he's as good as that guy believes he is. And he's strolling off. Strolling off. And we're we're on the verge of, a, of, of being embarrassed. You know, it's not good enough. His attitude is completely wrong. And not only that, he gets taken off and he walks down to the showers crying. You know, stop your crying. Just get out there. You, you've been on the pitch. Do what you're paid to do, for God's sake. Um, I'm absolutely fed up with this guy. This is a guy that when he came in, uh, I absolutely loved him. And don't get me wrong. I mean, he has more ability in his little toe than probably half of our squad put together. But that's no good if you don't want to be here, if you don't want to perform, if you don't want to play. And that's why he's simply not in the team. There's rumours that he's arrogant. He thinks he's better than everybody else. He doesn't want to be here. He believes he should be at some of the best clubs in the world. Then why did you come here in the first place? You know, we yeah. can say that Poch Pochettino signed him and Pochettino wanted him. But Pochettino never used him or couldn't use him because he wasn't fit. And the only reason why he's going back to France is, I believe, what Fabrizio Romano was saying, because they need French homegrown players. But they're not going to bring in any any French player. They're going to try and bring in the best they can. Mm -hmm. I don't believe it's Pochettino that wants them. I just believe they're getting them in just to kind of make a quota uh, come the end of the January transfer window to say we have so many homegrown French players. Um, mm -hmm. I struggle to see what manager actually wants this guy. I really do. I mean, he, he's got a bad attitude. He, he, he's absolutely terrible. And for me, I, a good riddance to him. I can't wait to see the back of him. And I'll be honest with you. I couldn't even care if he plays or not. What I'd be doing with the likes of Delhi Ali, the Salso, and Endo Belly is I'd be instructing their agents it's a loan with an obligation to buy or you're not going anywhere. It's that simple. I'm not doing anything in the best interest of these players. Let them go out. Hopefully they find form this, that, and the other. Why? They couldn't find form when they were here. That's the best time to find form when you're out on the football pitch representing the club that we all love, which is Tottenham Hotspur. And they've been a massive problem and a part of the decline as well because of their attitudes, because of how they're playing. So I couldn't care. Unless it's a loan with an obligation to buy, I'd leave them right there because they won't be long about finding a way out of the club, that's for sure. Yeah, I, I think that's that for me is the biggest concern within this deal. It's great to get him off the books and all that, but if if we're going to let him go, I think I said on my stream yesterday that we, we, we want to let him go because uh, it's just not working out from England. It's not working out in the Premier League. And like Daniel says there, Everton are interested, which I think is absolutely crazy. They don't even have a manager. Um, but you, you send him over to, to PSG. If he doesn't do well there, and PSG decided at the end of the season, well, we don't want to make that permanent. Well, you're then left with a player who has six months uh, less time left on his contract, has gone back to a league where he showed his talent previously and has now shown that maybe he can't quite do it there. That value drops even more. And a team mm. that we expect to, to want to buy him in PSG, well, they won't want to buy him then. And it's financially a, a disaster for Tottenham. So Mate, I think it's a good point you make there. Point. Yeah. I see some people making these points. Um, I just want to address them. They're saying, well, if we do sell all three, end on Belly, Deli, Ali, and a so, um, you know, what creativity are we left with? Well, it doesn't really matter because we're not doing anything in the first team, creating anything anyway. You know what I mean? So you can't say what we left with. It's absolutely, I don't agree with that because at the end of the day, there's three of them sitting there doing absolutely nothing, offering no creativity anyway. I'd much rather them just be gone. If they're not offering anything, you can't sit there and say, oh, we need to hang on to them uh, because we don't have any creativity. Conte doesn't want them. He doesn't like them. He doesn't use them. Very rarely use them. And they're not offering creativity anyway. So let's stop this as far as Spurs fans. Let's stop holding on to players that are holding us back. You know, you're talking about probably half a billion worth of talent there. Probably, you know, a close, a close to a, a half a billion worth of wages there who are offering absolutely nothing. So I'd say to them people about the creativity issue, Tell me what creativity they're bringing to the team that should make me fear losing them. Yeah, and especially you can't point to anything recently in you know, the last six months this season, if not even last season to a degree. I mean, they all had their moments even last season, each of them, but you're spot on, Dave. I mean, that's just what I kind of was finding the positivity in the Amrabat deal is because at the end of the day, if Conte finds a bit more use or he thinks that, you know, maybe um, Robert might be more of use to him than those three that you mentioned, then so be it. And then that's the case. It's the, I think the other problem we're realizing is Conte seems like he doesn't like using any of those three midfielders, and they have yet to really do anything for us to warrant, you know, really being included in the team. So you're spot on, Dave. 
Um, we do have an update from Fabrizio Romano on Twitter um, in the last couple of minutes. Um, I'm looking for my breaking news uh, video, but I think StreamYard has changed where everything is stored, so I can't play that. Uh, but Fabrizio Romano tweeted two minutes ago that Tottenham are prepared to submit an official bid for Sofian Amrabat, loan with buy option for 16 million euro. Talks are ongoing since Sunday. Player only wants Spurs move and Conte appreciates Amrabat. Spurs need to offload Ndombele and or Deli Alley before signing a new midfielder. Uh, so that there, the latest updates from Fabrizio Romano um, on Sofia and Amrabat. And again, as it says below me, if you do want to get that exclusive interview with Romano, head back to the beginning of this stream where he spoke about Luis Diaz, Amrabat and Dambale Ali um, and a few more. And I, I've just actually gotten a message with someone. I realized I completely forgot to ask him about Stephen Bergwin. But um, look, we had 10 minutes. We had to prioritize. I'm sure we'll, we'll get updates on him in the coming uh, coming days. Uh, one thing I did want to mention that Romano said with uh, regards to the amount of business that is going to be done. And we know he said yesterday that uh, Tottenham are very, very busy. We Dan Kilpatrick say there's a lot going on behind the scenes, but well, Delaney telling us it's going to be an intense couple of days for Paracci and Daniel Levy. And Fabrizio Romano told us that he expects Tottenham to make two or three signings before the window closes. Um, I think, again, that heavily depends on the Sandamale deal and on Deli Ali, who he said um, he expects to leave Tottenham in the coming days. Probably, in my personal opinion, probably on a loan. Um, but Jack, two or three signings, I suppose there's a few questions to put along with this one. Um, we'll go, first of all, with is it too late to get the proper signings and the ones that we need in this window? Uh, I think it's too late to bring in three quality players and three quality positions for us. I think it's too late, hence why we probably are kind of to a degree kind of going for a cheaper deal with them robot hence why maybe we're going for maybe cheaper deals elsewhere you know you at the end of the day you probably think adama Traore, a huge kind of household name but it's not like we're really paying a bunch of money for him at the end of the day so you probably would say right there as well as another example of us not having to fork over a lot uh the least ds deal seems to be the big one that maybe we're going after the one that maybe we're kind of thinking is the marquee sort of kind of uh, uh, I don't know, big kind of media, you know, image sort of photo. I'm not sure how to put that, but it seems like we're going after two signings at least. I think we're getting two through the door. Uh, can we get a third? I that seems really tough. It seems like very anti Daniel Levy to get three signings in the door. I think uh, we've the only players we've signed in the winter windows in the last like five or six seasons is. Eric Vine and I believe Lucas and maybe one other that I might be missing out on. Uh, so you do think about it like this sort of January window, if we got two in the door, would already be a huge step up on what we're kind of used to uh, with the very uh, tight uh, Daniel Levy. So I think I'm thinking we're getting two in the door, Maddie, to answer your question. Are we getting a third? I think that remains to be seen. Paracici, though, I hope he's working hard. Apparently, he's off in Italy enjoying himself, <laughs> uh, maybe with a few amarettos and things like that. But I'm not sure what you know, maybe he's going on over there. I'd like to think maybe he's just in Italy to figure out the cell phone bill, maybe with all the international calls that he's been making. Maybe he has to explain it over to the cell phone company there in Italy. Uh, but I think we're getting two in the door. Absolutely, Maddie. I'm going to put my foot down. Two, we're getting through. Are we getting that third? It remains to be seen what uh, Fabio Paracici can cook in Italy. Yeah, I, I completely agree there. I, th I think despite the the concerns from today, I do think Adama will still get over the line because it'll be such an embarrassment for this football club who's experienced too many embarrassments. Um, even last year with that managerial hunt, I think if we don't get Adama in because it's so publicly known that he's Conte's first choice and we've been trying to get it over the line for so long, um, I think that'll happen. And uh, Amrabat as well, as, uh, as uh, I assume again, Caller says there as well. Um, David, Paul O'Keefe on Twitter a while ago who is one of the best for, for inside information on Tottenham. And I just want to um, be entirely sure. Uh, I think he said Paratici at the moment is in contact with 15 different agents to to try and get deals done. And look, it, it's the way it's the way Paratici works. He'll negotiate with three, four, five different players, try and get all deals in place. And then at the last minute, decide which is the best one and, and push for that one. Does that give you confidence that there will be maybe that two or three signings getting over the line? Oh, 100%. Look, I called him Don when he first came here, you know. Don Paratici, let the guy cook. That, that's all I'm going to say to people. And I mean, e even if you look at even if we don't get the signing scene that people would like, you can't be blaming Paratici for this transfer window because he's proven that, like Juventus and stuff like that, that given the tools, he can work. So with Paratici, it's great. I mean, I, I love him. He's constantly walking around on his phone and he's, he probably is lining up all these deals. I probably do. I, I do believe that. But it's not him who has final say. Yes, he can go and say, right, I want to complete this deal, but it still has to be signed off from above. So you can have him out there on his phone doing all the deals you want. He can put all the deals we want in place, but it's, it, it comes from above. 
you know, whether they're going to be sanctioned or not. But do you know what? All I'm just going to say to fans is make what you want to Paratici, but let him cook. He could end up surprising a few people deadline day. I'll be honest with you. I'm known for delusions. I'm going to go with three players. And this isn't giving Daniel Levy any credit, by the way, for all those for all those people that are Levy out. I'm not giving him any credit whatsoever. I just honestly don't think that he's that blind or that naive or stupid to what's going on, where this club is heading if he doesn't bring in the investment. And I'm sure he doesn't want to sack another manager for failing to get top four. So, you know, bring in two or three players Bring in the three players. Bring, give me a Diaz, a Traore, and an Amrabat. I'd be happy with that. For and the reason why I say happy with that, we have to let's be realistic here. January transfer window is a hard window to negotiate in. It's always a tough window to get deals done. Not every club wants to be able to sell players in that. So if we got them three in this January transfer window, for me, that is a good a good window for the for the for for the time of window it is. Um, yeah. But yeah, Spurs fans out there, just that Paratici cook. And Connor says, David, how do you know um, all this inside info? My man, I'm Harry Kane's best friend. <laughs> it's simple as. It, it all started from the Harry Kane hair prediction, actually. That's that's where everything everything blew up. And now David is the best ITK there, there is for Spurs. Um, I just want to say there's 823 people watching live right now, which is absolutely ridiculous. Um Please do smash that like button if you haven't already. We're on 256 likes. Let's get that up to 350. I know there's uh, obviously a lot of you who hadn't hit that like button, so please do it completely free. It helps us out. Make sure to subscribe as well while, you, uh, while you're while you here. And we're not quite done yet, but make sure to head over to uh, the two lads' channels as well to subscribe. Um, and we let them plug it very, very shortly. But I do want to mention before we finish up, um, Stephen Bergwin, um, Jack, do you think he'll be a Tottenham player on the 1st of February? Yes, I actually, it seems like all those, it, it felt like we were actually right at the edge of those sort of rumors with Ajax. You know, they moved on David Narash over to Shakhtar Donetsk, which I would say just quickly, great move for Shakhtar Donetsk in that mm -hmm. uh, beautiful mix of a Brazilian, Ukrainian kind of system they have over there. Uh, good move for them. Uh, it seemed like they were moving him off the books in order to bring Steven Bergvine in. Uh, but now with this, probably, I bet we raised the price from, I think it was originally like 22 million is what we were kind of asking for. It seemed like in order for Ajax to actually, you know, let uh, the negotiations go through. I bet we raised that to probably 25 million, 26, 27 million, which maybe Ajax just aren't willing to pay, you know, for Steven Bergvine. And to a degree, I feel like it's not happening. I could see it maybe happening this summer, some sort of move. Let's say he doesn't really kick on. Let's say he kind of goes through another kind of bad form or bad patch again. Uh, then we could sell him in the summer. But it seems like Antonio Conte, he has praised him heavily in the press. He's kind of said he sees him as kind of a player that offers things that other players don't, which I found very interesting. I think that says a lot about maybe how much he values Bergvine and that he sees that Bergvine can offer things that maybe somebody like a Lucas can't or somebody like a Brian Hill can't and things like that, uh, which I think says a lot about the player. And I think that would mean that they probably wouldn't let him go for probably anything less than 25 million. Will Ajax pay that 25 million? Probably not. And even if they did, maybe Daniel Levy would just raise it a few extra million just to piss them off maybe a bit more. Uh, so I see him. Uh, I see him staying this January. I maybe would make a bold prediction that he leaves in the summer, though. Okay. Uh, look, I mean, it, it makes sense. I think, um, as Carlos says here, everything changed changed at Leicester. And I think we're, we're keeping him because of that game against Leicester. You know, in, in the last two years since we signed him, there hasn't really been much else that would say we should turn down 18 or 20 million uh, euro from Ajax. I think given from the rest of his performances, um, bar a select few, we should accept that deal. But look, even if it's just for the romance of that comeback against Leicester, it was absolutely fantastic. Yeah, what a swan um, song. And I'm... Absolutely. I'm, I'm here for it, you know. Uh, another super chat from William Kelly says, hashtag back Conte. Everyone, get that trending. Get on Twitter, tweet hashtag back Conte. Get on Facebook, uh, Bebo, MySpace, whatever it is. Even if you need to go down to your local hall and just pin it up on a on a board, whatever it is, get that trending. Hashtag back Conte. Um, David, we'll ask you as well, do you think Stephen Bergwijn will be a Spurs player uh, on at 11.01pm on Monday night? <laughs> so how... Do you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna say yes. I'm gonna Love say it. yes. Uh, purely because I think Conte wants to keep him. Um, I think if we do get a Diaz deal over the line, you might potentially see see my favorite man, Gil Messi, be loaned out um, um, and, and, until the summer. Uh, but I think we'll keep Stevie B at least until the summer. Um, look, to be fair to the guy, I mean he scored the two goals against Leicester. He actually had a decent game against Chelsea the other day. Um, and for me. You can play him up top with Harry Kane. It's perfect. 
Big H, my man, king of the lane, best goal scorer in world football, who I never gave up on. Um, you know, he 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 um he'll be able to drop deep, pick up the ball if he needs to be. And then you have Stevie Bergwijn making all the runs in behind. But not only that, you're seeing against Chelsea, if we do put long balls up top, he's well able to hold them up as well. If you can get the focus and the drive and the determination and probably the anger that Sionchu managed to get out of Bergwijn against Leicester, and we could carry that towards the end of the season, we have a player here. But I'm not going to get too hyped up on this train because I've seen it time and time again where players come in here, they have a couple of good games and people are taking their underpants off and going nuts and everything else. Um, you know what I mean? And it's a couple of good games. And then ultimately, then the drop-off happens and they're poor again. So I, I think for me, what the Leicester game done is it's brought him a couple of months. It's brought him until the summer transfer window. And for now, it's up to him. Give him every chance he's given, it's up to him to take it, whether it's two, whether it's five, whether it's 10 minutes off the bench or whether it's starting. Every time you walk across that white line is an opportunity to represent Tottenham Hotspur and represent yourself to the very best you can and to show the fans what you can offer to this club. So it's up to him between now and the January transfer or between now and the summer what way his Tottenham career goes. I absolutely love that, David. I've said it before. We need to get you on those like pre-game promos that Tottenham do. You know, because you, you could honestly get me excited about absolutely anything. Really, you could tell me Conte's leaving. Uh, Daniel Levy has extended his contract. All this, you managed to get me excited about it. I absolutely love it. Um, I just want to mention as well, Eamon Duffy here saying, did anyone see Brian Hill's reply? Um, anyone who does not know this, uh, Mundo Deportivo, a Spanish newspaper, put out a story earlier this morning saying that Brian Gill is desperate to leave Tottenham. He hasn't settled in, in London. He's absolutely hating it. He's this, he's that. They, they did uh, reiterate that it wasn't anything to do with the dressing room or the club. It was simply he could not settle in London um, and he wanted to go back to Spain. And it's one of those that it's not a reliable source, but you can't help but think about it if it comes out. Uh, Brian Gill quickly uh, put those rumours to bed. He, re he responded to the tweet, which was four question marks and a laughing emoji, which um, I think tells us all we need to know. He which? He's a winner. He's a winner. He's Brian Gill. <laughs> he is the greatest footballer of all time. And I know David and Will Stewart uh, will agree with me on that one. Um, look, 800 people still here. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. We will be live again at 7 p.m. tonight with the Euro expert uh, mm. talking in a great uh, amount of detail on Luis Diaz, great. Sofian Amrabat, Muhammad Ali Cho, show, um, and even any other player that comes up in the meantime. But before we let you go today, uh, you need to stay because you need to find out where you can find these two gents on YouTube. Uh, Jack, we'll start with you. Let everybody know where they can find you and what they're getting themselves in for. Yeah, they can always find me alongside David uh, on the Irish Hotspur. If you need a kind of a bit more, maybe especially kind of relation to transfers and kind of upgrading Spurs, head on over to the second channel, Flat Cup Euro Talk. I did a big breakdown on Sofian Amrabat. Uh, he is basically, it's a less than a 10 minute video. I kind of just break down what he could actually bring to Spurs. I break down a 2019 season with Hellas Verona, compare it to Hoybjerg's first season with us at Spurs. A lot of people like me kind of comparing the stats between a Spurs player and the player that we're rumored with to see what they could do better. And I kind of broke it down. Not really too excited by the signing, I'll be honest, uh, but I do break down what he could bring to Spurs. I'm going to be doing some scout reports on Luis Diaz. I'm going to be doing maybe another kind of part two sort of on Adama Traore and what that could mean for Spurs. Lots of things having to do with the Tottenham Hotspur kind of transfer rumors and what those sort of players could bring to Spurs and kind of breaking down what they actually can do for us. So if that sounds interesting to you, head on over to the second channel. But Maddie, really do appreciate the opportunity. Appreciate you having me on. It's been a pleasure. Pleasure is all mine, Jack. I, I really do appreciate your time and we won't leave it as long next time. We'll have to get you back on soon. Um, and everyone, I'm sure you're sick of what you're about to hear because um, it's always said on this channel. But David, tell us where we can find you on YouTube. Yeah, no, look, if 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 Harry Kane makes the hairs of uh, on the back of your neck stand up, he sends tingles, uh, tingling feelings down your spine. You know, you get a rock on every time you see Hoiberg <laughs> drive into a challenge. And sometimes, you know, you just want to love this club and you want to be a bit delusional. Or even if you want me to pick you up, come over to the Irish Hotspur. I'm always sitting there smiling, big old uh, Irish smile on me. Come over there, smash that subscribe button. I mean, look, being honest, I wouldn't be in the game if it wasn't for my man Matty here, who really helped me out, get everything up and running. Um, but yeah, if you like, if you if 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 uh, if you have it in you, after you've smashed the subscribe on um, Flat Cap Your Talk and Matty Hazer's channel. Come over to mine and smash that subscribe as well. We are on the big push for 6K. We're about 300 and something off. I know that's not going to happen today, but even if we can get a couple over there and smash that subscribe button, it'd be awesome. So thank you. 
Well, Joe, you know there's 700 people still watching, so do make sure to go over and subscribe to the two of those channels. And I just do want to say as well, um, thank you very much to everyone who's tuned in for this stream. Um, I'm sure you're here for Jack and Nicky and David Harris and not me or for Bitsy Romano. Um, so I really do appreciate everybody tuning in. Um, we've had over 10,000 people tune in uh, over the duration of the hour and 342 likes, and we've got about 80 new subscribers. So I really do appreciate it from wow. every single one of you. Um, you're all absolute legends. Jay, uh, Caller, Adrian, Adam, Andrew, Little Baz, Dark Wolf, Barnabas, Racer, um, every single one of you. Uh, thank you so much for the support. But for now, and always, thanks so much.